Happy Sabbath again. All right, let us begin with a word of silent prayer. Amen. All right, so you see the, the top of the notes, the title, Establishing the Prophet. And, ah, no, now this verse came to mind. It's not in the notes. Um, can someone find, actually, yeah, I'll ask this. Can, can someone find the verse when on uh, the Bible states, it says, God would, would have all, all his, um, yeah, amen. Can someone find that text, please, and read it out loud? God would have all, all of us to be prophets. And whenever it's found, please read that aloud. It's not in the notes. Numbers 11, 29. Numbers 11, 29. And Moses said unto him, for my sake, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Amen. So, for, so the Lord would want all of us to be prophets, amen. And based and based on this verse, how, how does somebody become a prophet? Just just only if you only read this verse, how would someone be, be a prophet? Amen. The spirit must be put upon them. All right. So that is that if you just read that verse, that is that is the one thing we'll take from, from this verse. That for you to be a prophet, the spirit has to be upon you. That is what Moses um told us. All right, let's, let's go back to the um to notes. Exodus 4. Verse 14, it says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy what? Thy brother. I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy what? Okay, so what is a prophet? A spokesman. So can it be a spokesman for, for, for on the side of wrong? Yes, because the Bible tells us there are, there's many false prophets. So every false prophet is just a spokesman for Satan. No true prophets are spokesmen for, for God. Continue on. He shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even, he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. So a prophet is a spokesman, and prophets, just as um, just as we um, Val went over, one thing she went over was salt. And what prophet used salt to heal heal something? Elisha. So he took the salt and cast it where? In the water, and it turned and it cleansed the water. So that 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 verse tells us we should put salt in water, and and it 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 cleans it helps cleanse the water. So that 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 prophetic story, is showing us natural um natural things as well. So, go ahead. Oh really? I didn't know that. But amen. So, so the scriptures tell us that this is something we, we can do as a natural remedy. So a prophet a prophet's work is to heal the waters, and what are the waters? People, nations, tongue, and kindred. So the prophet's work is to heal, heal these, these places. Because when you look in all these kingdoms here, there's a prophet in each one of them. And they were put there to heal the nations, Egypt as well, and so forth. Go ahead. Christ calls us the salt of the earth. Amen, yes. Christ, yes, Christ calls the people the salt of the earth. And the salt is cast into the water, into the nations, and the kindreds, and the peoples, and the thousands and millions to heal them, and um, to heal them of their backsliding, of their sicknesses. Okay, and verse 16 tells us that a prophet is also the mouth. It's the mouthpiece. It's the mouth of, of God. Um, okay, all right. Exodus 7, verse 1 and 2. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. So, yet again, Aaron is his mouthpiece and Aaron is his prophet. 
So a prophet is directly synonymous with a mouthpiece. There's true, there's true prophets and there's false prophets. And they're both mouthpieces for their, for their masters. All right. Thirteen MR 149.3. So when you go and read in Revelation 13, 11, it says, and it, and it shall speak as a what? As a dragon. So, so, this, that, so the United States, as this nation, will, will then be the mouthpiece of who? Of Satan, of Rome, this dragon spirit. So, they, so then this is how we clearly, we've placed in the past that the United States, in, in context of the threefold union, is this false prophet. So, and it, because it's, 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 it's a mouthpiece for Satan. Continue on, 13 of Mar, 149.3. It says, let not Satan be your what? Spokesman any longer. Jesus has a work, work for you to do. Satan will speak for you if you let him, but tell, but tell him, no, let my lips utter um, only words of faith and hope and truth. So Peter, Christ rebuked Peter when Satan spoke through him in Matthew 16, correct? Yes. So um, Peter at that time, was was letting Satan be his spokesman, that that um Satan and he, he allowed Satan to speak through him, but anytime Satan wants to speak through us, and the way the way we know that Satan is trying to speak through us is when our is is when the thoughts don't line up with Christ's word. Once the thoughts don't line up with Christ's word, and we want to speak those words, we have to say these things. No, let my lips utter only words of faith and hope and truth. Continue on. It says, keep talking faith. Rebuke the what? The enemy and the great black cloud of despair will arise and roll back and disappear. So every time we do this, this is a type of the second coming. Because in the second coming, the, the great black cloud of despair will roll back. Because the heavens shall roll back as a what? As a scroll. So this is what all these things is just typifying the second coming. Every time we overcome self, it's it's shown it's it's a minute version of the second coming of Christ because Christ has just now come to save you from your sin. All right, Isaiah seven, um, seven to nine it says, "Thus saith the Lord God: It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son." If, if you will not believe, surely ye shall not be what? Established. Established. So, so if you don't believe the mouthpiece of God, you shall not be what? Established. All right. So therefore, to be established, you must do what? Believe. believe. It's just, yeah, believe in the mouthpiece of God. And the true mouthpiece of God is just Jesus himself. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Um, Just read the bold. It says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. So believing in his prophets is, is how you, you then become um, established. So every time period in this earth's history, God's people always had a prophet. So this time period, what, what should there be? A prophet. But is there literally a living prophet at this moment? No. So therefore, what would the Lord have to do? Raise up a prophet. So just as we read... From Numbers 11, God would have, have that we all be his prophets, that we all be his mouthpiece, that his spirit may be upon all of us. So, because if you go back to the time of, in, in the church of Ephesus, there was prophets in that time. Smir in the time of Ephesus, it was the time of Christ, so you had the 12 disciples. Those were the Lord's prophets. Time of, time of Smyrna, they also, um, time of Smyrna is in the 300s, and the Lord had his um, prophets then. Um, Pergamus, Thyatira, all the way down to um, the sixth church, and then it was Sister White. But now in the seventh church, there's no living prophet at this time. So therefore, the Lord has to raise up one in this last and final church. And this, and the prophets in this time are going to echo all the prophets of all the previous churches. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Elijah, amen. Amen. Just as the same angel that came to Daniel and John came to him. 
Amen. Yes. Now in the time. Amen. Where the Lord is speaking to a people, even now. Amen. Amen. You may not recognize it, but it's happening. Mm -hmm. happening. Because at the end of that, what the Lord just told me is in 1798, there was a prophet being raised up by Satan. Because the Bible says America mm -hmm. speaks as a, comes up like a lion and speaks as a Satan. Dragon. Well, Satan is raising up his prophet. Mm -hmm. Which means the Lord is also now raising up his, his prophet. prophet. Amen. Satan is doing it, then God has to. So at the Sunday law, we know for a fact that the Lord has a prophet. Mm -hmm. Because Satan raised up his prophet. Amen. 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 Prophet there just to to teach us and to just win that very fact that right when the nation is changing, prophet. Amen. Comes right up with it. Oh yeah, Amen. So there is a prophet at the beginning of the nation. It must be a prophet at the end, end of the nation because at the Son-in-Law, the United States ends at, as a lamb-like beast. Mm -hmm. So so spiritually, it's a new nation because its whole laws have changed. It's not, it's not the same system as it was before. It's a new system. So now there has to be a prophet there. By the son-in-law, there will be literal prophets as were prophets like Daniel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Gad, Nathan, XYZ. But that's nice. 1989, when I left, the Lord raised up a prophet. Mm -hmm. not, we have to see it. Mm -hmm. Then at 2014, they made a law. America spoke. What did the Lord do? Raise up. He raised up Mark. Amen. He raised up a prophet. Mm -hmm. When they speak again, because that's what we're teaching, right? As a children of Sunday law, they can has, speak. Mm -hmm. uh, but even before that, at the midnight cry, something more Amen. happened that shows that, and then the Lord is going to do what? Raise, Raise up a prophet. prophet. Amen. We have to see it. It's, it's not, I mean, if we're looking for Moses, we don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. but, but you have to see that the man that the Lord raised up to open up the truth for the time, they're the Lord's mouthpiece. Amen. Okay, so. Then, what, from what I'm hearing, what you're saying is that we need to understand the role of a prophet because a prophet may be broader than, than how he viewed it in the sense of having the, these, these this outward grand, grand visions and dreams. But that will be there, but it is not only that in, in and of itself. But going with what Swin was saying, huh? Them Amen, yes, call them teachers. But going with what Swin was saying, at the end, the Lord shall have his prophets. Yeah. However, the, um, the Lord has to, the Lord will put forth a message so that, so that all, all might know that this, this message was going forward prior to the, to, the, um, to the fulfillment of that prophecy um, yeah, that came here. As we know, the Lord has been showing us things Things that, that shall fall upon the earth, even from back here. And all these things shall come to pass. And, and men must know these things before it comes to pass, so that, so that when it comes to pass, they might believe, a.k.a. they might be established. Go ahead. Prophets, but they're established when it comes to pass. Amen. Okay. And we'll see, we'll see this as we go on. Um, Lord, if you look down, get to Samuel, if first Samuel 3. Samuel, um, at the end, when um, the house of, um, the house of uh, Eli fell, he was established from Dan, Dan to Beersheba. And, and, and Sisbo has a quote. It says that from Dan to um, yeah, means the whole land, the whole land of Israel, and Israel is the house of God. So all Adventists will know that there is a message and a messenger there. But we have to also keep in mind that that even the Lord is even though the Lord is sending us these things, we must not lift up ourselves. In it, we have to stay humble. But however, the message itself is also designed to to keep you humble because. When Samuel received that message, he feared. He was afraid to, to speak forth that, that, that truth. It, it made him afraid. And when anyone's afraid, they're not exultant um, most times. They're, they're more like, like held back and so forth. So these things shall, shall happen unto us as well if we're faithful. But continuing on, Revelation 19, verse 10. 
It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy um, brethren, thank you, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the what? Spirit of prophecy. So this is what the Lord wants to establish in this whole time period here, is this. Spirit of prophecy. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. Perish. So, and we know that here, it's this low time peace. So when the vision is established and, and so forth, this is now, it brings forth life. It brings forth this rest and peace. And this is what this low time peace is, is that it also, you can also um, take from it that, that prophets will be raised up and, um, and, and that souls will heed, heed, heed to those things so that they might, um, they might not fall. Can so read Psalms 93 verse 5. Amen. So the testimonies are what? Very sure. And 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 um we just read where where John says that it is the spirit of prophecy. So the spirit of prophecy is what? Very sure. It's very sure. All right. It, now the word that word means a witness. So Amen. Yes. It means witness. So the only reason why it's very sure because the the only true witness is who? Christ is the true witness. So if you're only speaking his words, that the spirit of prophecy will be very sure because it's only coming from Christ, not anything of man. Go ahead. Amen, yes. More. Amen. Yes. Amen, yes. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. A more, more sure. sure word of prophecy. Amen. 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 Yeah. And actually, there's a quote that says exactly what 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 um he just said. I, I believe I have it in here that Peter saw saw um saw saw Christ and saw um Moses and and um yes, but but still he still ended up saying we still have a more sure word regardless of all those things we have a more sure word. Amen. Amen. Than anything else. Amen. So this is why she always states that our faith must be established in the word of God. We must be Bible students. We must study the Bible daily. This is why she constantly says these things over and over. All right. Psalms 19.7. Can someone read that, please? Amen. So we'll read the next. Psalms 119, 144. Righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Amen. So that which the Lord puts in our mouths, if we're faithful, these things will stand forever. It's an everlasting testimony. It's an everlasting word. All right. So we're going to read the next, next, next few verses. Actually, yeah. All right. Can someone read Revelation 12, verse yeah, verse 10, 11, and 17. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. But the accuser, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, and which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, so Asante, how do you overcome Satan then? With the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. It says here, it says by the, by what? It says two things, and what? And by the word of their testimony. Okay, of whose? Christ's testimony. No, it says right, no, exactly, their testimony. All right, exactly. Amen. So you must have your own what then? For when? 
For what time? For a, a man, for that time. So there must be a testimony for that time. But this is the thing that many people hate. They hate when you want to interpret the Bible for your time. For the situation that you're literally in, they don't want to hear that message. Because generally speaking, 99.9% .9 of the time, that message is not a, it's not, it's not a lovey-dovey, very soft and smooth message. It's a cutting message. So this is, this is, this is why men will hate you. Because you're putting, your, your, you're putting your own words inspired by God for your own time upon the scriptures. Because you see this with, with the chart right here with Islam. They, um, John says that he saw fire and brimstone come, come out of their mouths, right? But the pioneer said, said what? That, that, that the fire and brimstone is what? Guns. It's guns and bullets. So they took the symbol and applied it literally to the 1400s. And they, and they applied it for that time. So likewise, it's going to be for our time. So... Amen, yeah. Fire and brimstone. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. So, this is, this is, um, this is the Christ. This is what's happening now, and we see this in the earth. The Lord has given us the Bible for freedom, so that we can exercise our own, own minds to to apply symbols. However, the Lord shows you, because I can apply a symbol in a certain way. Amen. If it makes good sense, I can apply some in a certain way and you can apply it in a certain way. And it does not fight each other. But we've taken the same verse to say Psalms 127 verse 9. We can take a symbol from there, any one of us, and apply it totally different ways. A ah, amen. Yes, I forgot about that. Matthew, one says finger, another says spirit, one says um, sword, one says word. But they're talking about the same event, but they use four different um. Four different words, four different symbols, four different usages to speak about that thing, that one thing. So therefore, they use their own testimony. And what did they do onto them? They tried to kill them. They they hung them. They cut them. They did all these things. They're gonna hate you because of the because of the um, application you're putting for your time. Go ahead, Swindon. Amen. Go ahead, Swindon. Oh, it, I think it was Quentin first. Okay, all right, Swindon. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Live, amen. And they lived, amen. Living soul. So you are inspired when you, when you make these amen. applications. Amen. Right? Contrary to what men may think, um, men may want to think. And secondly, the reason why the Lord will give you one understanding and give me another of the same thing is to bring us together. Amen. Because our attitude when coming to deal with these two seeming contradictions yeah. needs to be one of Christ. It needs to be one of prayer and, humil and humiliation before God for our coming before the Lord. So, so it's not, it's not, um, it's not far fetched. The Lord will do that all the time. Mm -hmm. He said, when there's no controversy in the church, it's because the man is not serving. Amen. Amen. And you see this in the earth now. If you see, if you take take um, the whole thing now with, with, with um, the, yeah, amen, the virus and the um, vaccine. S Men say that your freedom is infringing on my freedom because you're choosing to do what you want and I'm choosing to take the vaccine, but you, you using your freedom is hurting me. That is false. It's foolishness. My freedom of choosing what I want to do with my own body cannot infringe on you choosing what you want to do with your own body. Exactly. So this is what Rome, Rome feared as well with, with God's word, that everybody had the freedom to go in his word and interpret things however they, they want. And it, it seems loose, loose, loose and all. It is to some sense, but it has to be still guided by God's word. But others will, some men will take that and see it and then add their own spurious jewels, their own spurious coins, and add their dust and their dirt to it. So, and these, these evils we cannot prevent. We just have to tell, tell men, 
go and study your Bible, and whatever the Lord shows you, based upon his word, so be it. It must, um, we have to submit to it because it's God's word. But however, if they break in a rule, we know that God had not showed them. The Lord had not inspired them to, to, to say these words or make the application. Go ahead, Quentin. Go ahead. Down or anything, it's it's white. You see it, it's white. Okay, okay. But um, then when it when it bends, refracts and so forth. Oh, amen. Different colors. So one person might go in the Bible and see blue. Yeah, see blue, and another person might see red, and another mm. might see yellow. But, but it's all the same. the same. Light. Amen. Yeah. So um, God doesn't want us to be independent of each other, so He allows us to only see certain things in certain ways. So then bringing it together, we get a fuller picture of Christ. Amen. And my second point is um, this thing about um, this understanding about people being able to be inspired now is something that directly provokes the spirit of Antichrist because the, um, the spirit of Antichrist doesn't accept that Christ comes in the flesh. Amen, yes. And so when Christ comes in our flesh and we become... You know, when we are inspired to say certain things, men want to deny it because they have that spirit. Amen. So, yeah, amen. So, inspired, every man is, is inspired of God when, they, when the Lord inspires them to turn from error. That is being inspired. But there, we need to understand the, the different types of being inspired. You the Lord can inspire you to move, 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 move from the city into the country. And that's right. The Lord inspired you for that. But all I'm, all I'm trying to say is that these things are broad and the Lord defines what inspired is. Son. Amen. Yes. So they, 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 all the ones that came to them, you're not inspired. Who are you? You're mm -hmm. not inspired. Who are you? Say, and when he sent the one that really inspired God, he said, hey, kill him. Amen. And this is what they're going to do. When finally inspiration comes. They have been fighting it for so long, they'll just fight it again. So I'm saying this to say because this is something that will happen. And we, and we, must, we must understand that. And we must understand that when new light comes, we, we, the first thing we go is upon our knees and pray to study the Bible because men will make applications of things upon, um, and, and we have to understand if it's true or not. We have to know it's true or not by God's word. That's why we must study and we must understand scriptures, scriptures for ourselves so that when we hear anything, we might know that if it's, um, if it's true or false based only upon the word of God. All right. And. Yeah, this is what happened in Numbers. Yeah, this is what happened in Numbers eleven because the two men that were outside of the camp prophesied, while the sixty-eight men, I believe, were still in the camp prophesying, and uh, and I believe Joshua saw that and thought that those men outside the camp were fighting against Moses and the sixty-eight that were in the camp prophesying, but no, they were just they were they were applying themselves in a different way of of um of the same spirit, and this is what happened with I can't remember it was some it was. One tribe, I believe, one tribe was on the other side of the river, and they built up a, I want to say an altar, I don't know if it was an altar or a statue or something. Yeah. And, and, um, it was Phineas. Yeah, Phineas came, came over there to go in. Went to Joshua and told him, like, you're building this altar. So they went over to, to kill them, but it was only because he was hasty in, in, in seeing what they, what they had built. Amen. He was inspired of God for them to do that on the other side. Of the Amen. So... Phineas, Phineas didn't realize that they were applying something in a certain way for their time, for their region, to suit them. And Phineas saw it as something that's directly fighting against God. And he went for it to, to stand for God, but he really wasn't standing for God. He was, he was, he was being selfish. Misguided. Yeah, he was, he was being misguided at that point. So we, we always must watch the spirit in which we're under. Amen? Amen. All right. So Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Revelation 6, 9. 
And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the, the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the what? Testimony, Testimony which they held. So it's, it's not only that we're holding, holding to God's word, but it's how we are applying it for our time. That is what men will not like because many people are going to hold, hold to God's word and say X, Y, and Z upon it. But how you're applying it, that is, that is where, where the, 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 problem, the problem lies. Satan knows this, he's going to do the same thing. Amen. Now we have our Bible. Now you need the instructions of 1 John. Try the Spirit Amen. because many false prophets have gone out into the world. People are going to come saying right things, and those things are right. But what Spirit is inspiring them to, to say, say those, those things. Right things? Amen. And the Bible says, try that Spirit. Amen. Because not every Spirit that's inspired is coming from God. Some of it is coming from Satan. But how am I going to know which is which? Amen. Go on to the testimony. They speak Amen. not according to his word. There is no spirit. There is no life in, in them. them. That's how you try it. But Amen. not everyone wants to sit down and do, and do that work. Amen. And you see this with, with John. Because John John said unto Jews, who, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Because it was right for them to come to, to, to John. But... Yeah, the Holy Spirit did not send them. Satan sent them there. So many people shall come, but just just because they, they come there does not mean that Christ sent them there. The Spirit didn't bring Judas to Christ. Amen, yeah. Judas. Amen. Judas came, came to Christ, but Satan sent him there. It's, just, it's the same thing. Hmm? Yeah. 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 Because Christ... Same, same thing. In other words, they were agents of Satan doing his bidding, but Christ accepted it because the disciples at that time they didn't understand. So mm -hmm. Christ accepted their judgment. Yeah. So decided that he would make a good disciple. So he what he did call them, he called them um what he heard from the spirit in them. That inspired him to go there. Yeah. That that impelled him. Amen. And we need to realize that this is speaking about um, our future, that many people will come in. Amen. Yeah. And many people will come in and we have to accept them on because we can't read hearts. We don't know who's who, but it is, it is um, by their words, you shall know what spirit they are of. By their fruits, you shall know them. All right. So it says, and for the testimony which they held. So. There has to be a testimony for this time. There has to be a testimony. There has to be a group there teaching people about what happened at 1989, not 96, 911, 2007, 2014, and onward, constantly, always with um, each step of the light. Continue on. Um, 7 BC, 986.5. Instead of, a, instead of it, um, the, Sis White adds, adds a little bit more to it because Revelation 6 9 says, and for the testimony which they held, but she says, the testimony of Jesus Christ. And testimony of Jesus Christ is what? Spirit the spirit of prophecy. All right. So Revelation 6, 9 is directly talking about the spirit of prophecy. All right. Matthew 24, verse 9. Then shall they... Okay, who... Who is this they here? Okay, all right. So Swinon said what? What you said? Asante, you said what? All right. So that's... Okay, you said what? Okay, we just applied that one word they how many times? Three times. So therefore, these are different what? Testimonies upon the very same thing. We just applied it three different times. So, so any, this, this verse can be, um, this verse will be fulfilled, but it may not be a, fa a, 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 a false, it, it may not be as grand fulfillment yeah. Amen. But it could be your your family. Amen. It could be your brother, sister, mother, cousin, uncle, aunt, whatever it may be. And it still fulfills this. Or, or as you said, you said what again? The false prophets. So it can be a, a false prophet. But then Swinon said, they are your, your what? Your brethren. So then they can deliver. It's, 
So this end, amen, shall bring you up to the, to the court. So this, we just took the word they and applied they three different ways. All right, we have to realize that these things can be done because this is what people literally do. Because um, Luke 21 says that the mother shall, mother shall hate, hate their daughters and the daughters their mother and the father, the son, and the son, the father. So it could be the family members that scenario we're saying. It says, um, then they shall um, deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. All right. Um, all right. Can someone read the next next paragraph? Um, yeah, the next next quote, the the bold portion. To the end ye may be established. The gifts of the Spirit are for the building up of the body of Christ, and none of them has been used for this purpose more than the gift of prophecy. Amen. So the highest gift is what? It's prophecy. Next paragraph, can someone read? Um, actually, when do you can establish the people of God like prophecy? So this is, um, I believe this is Wagner um, writing here. And he's showing that prophecy is what establishes the people more than anything else. Jump down to paragraph 12. Can someone read this paragraph, please? same spirit is to be with his people even unto the end. Consequently, we find that testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy, is to be found in the last state of the church, the remnant. Paul also writing to those who live, who should live at the time of the coming of the Lord, says despise not prophesying. Amen. Because th this, this is the one gift that, that the Lord has used to establish his church and for the edifying, the helping of his church the most. Next paragraph. Can someone read this, please? Paragraph 13. The establishing power of the prophetic word is shown by the apostle Peter when, after relating the view which he had of the power coming of our Lord Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, he said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Learn to do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Amen. So, the establishing power of the prophetic word comes when the light comes. And applied this previously. The midnight cry, this is this bright light set up behind them. So, this is the prophetic word. Yeah, actually, I could leave that spirit of prophecy. It's also the what? Oh, amen, yes. To see. Amen. Amen, yeah, so. I could write, write it back here as well. From the very beginning, this is, this is the time when we really started seeing, seeing a lot more things for our time. We've seen it previously, but it, it, it increased much at this point and onward, and then it's going to increase even more than tenfold at the end. Amen. 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 So, I actually got go ahead, Quentin. Yeah, and points it to your your day. Yeah. Amen. Okay, so all right. Um. Okay, let's go to Psalm seventeen, verse thirteen. It's not not in the notes. 
as I said previously, I want this to be more interactive. You need to be more in interactive in Sabbath school. And I'm just going to do a short exercise then here. Verse 13. Something we looked at earlier, earlier this year. So, because we have to overcome by the testimony of our word and the blood of the Lamb. It has to be both of them. It's not just one. If you have one, you really don't have any. You have to have both of them. So, can someone read this verse, verse for me, verse 13? Arise, O Lord, to support him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay, so, so the wicked is what? Is God's sword. But what else is, what else is God's sword then? It's the word of God. So then we would need, amen, we would need, need saving from what? The word of God. All right, that may sound contrary to what we already know, but we, we do need saving from the Word of God because, amen, yes, a two-edged sword. But also Hebrews tells us that God is a consuming fire. But when you look at what Sister White says about a consuming fire, God is only a, a consuming fire to the wicked, to, to the, yeah, amen, to the carnal mind. So, so from this verse we can read, Man, we need to be delivered from this carnal mind so that God may not consume us. Because this, this sword is a flaming sword that, that will cut you through and through and shall consume you. So we just now made, we just applied it two ways in this one verse. Go ahead, Swindon. Go ahead. Ah. Okay. O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked. The two disappointments was to deliver those who were uh, seeking truth. Amen. Them. And what, what, what did they do as soon as they were disappointed? Go up Go, the above him. Yeah, mock, yeah mock them. This night the Lord delivered them. In, it, he gave them mistake. The hiding of the mistake was the sword. It was the thing Amen, that was yes. used to separate, separate. the righteous from Amen. the wicked. Because Christ says, I am come. Come not to bring peace, but a what? A sword. A sword. So he came to bring the wicked. Because, amen. Yeah. Because we, we need to understand, because the Bible also states, iron sharpeneth what? Iron. And the iron kingdom is what? Rome. Is this, is Rome. And it's this sword. So we, so it's, so this sword is Rome. It's the word of God. It's numerous things. And we need to understand and exercise our minds to see that, man, this is talking about us. It's talking about now. And, and we must apply it according to that which the Lord has shown. Right but, right amen, amen. You have to apply it, the, apply it right at the right time. And it's only by prayer and Bible study. That's it. Go ahead, Kanar. Yeah, I was going to say, like, later on, it says after the rule says, if we can put the right construction upon it. Amen. Rule 4 says, if it makes good sense, amen. then we can't have an error. But I, I pray that we take in, like what Swindon just said, that disappointment is how God removes wicked people from the church. Amen. The Lord uses disappointments to remove people. So the midnight cry, what, is, what uh, should we expect? A, a disappointment. disappointment. And if we get angry because God leads us to a disappointment, we're going to be removed. Amen. He's only trying to show us something. And his true people who understand his character will not be disappointed because of this disappointment. Amen. And... Um, the quote says, It is in a crisis that character is revealed. When the earnest voice proclaimed at midnight, Behold, the Baron cometh, go out to meet him. Jump down. It says, So now, a sudden and unlooked for calamity, something that brings the soul face to face with, with death, will show this any real faith in the promises of God. And this why has, has this same, same quote in Revering Herald that speaks about bereavement, um, bereavement, calamities, and all these things. All these things are God's sword. Sort to reprove us and bring us to him to flee, flee onto that that tower. Go ahead, Quentin. You had a hand up. Someone. Oh, Rashad, you had your hand up. Um, another application to the sword would be um, would be the prophet or the one who is inspired because um, the Lord says unto Jeremiah, "With thee thou art my battle axe, Amen. Or and my weapon of war. Amen. Because with thee will I break down Babylon, and with thee I will take down these nations. So. The sword, it, it's also um, the, the men who go forth with the message. Amen. They're the ones who are going to break these things. Amen. So the wicked is God's sword, and the righteous is his sword. He has these, these two swords. And, 
Amen. It's good and evil. Um, the tribe of Benjamin were the only ones that can fight with both hands. And Christ is showing for that he, he is a true one because the first king of Israel was a Benjamite. That first king of Israel is showing the last king of Israel, the true king of Israel, which is Christ. Because Saul, Saul the son of Kish, was a Benjamite. Go ahead. Amen, yeah. It's the smallest one. It says, um, amen, yeah. The first king is showing the last king, which is Christ. So Christ, the true Benjamite, fights with both swords. Because it says, David tells us, which, is, which came up right after Saul, he says, from the wicked, which is thy sword. So, he, so David understood that the wicked is God's sword and the righteous. And Christ uses both of these swords to fight. Um, there was another hand, I believe. Was there? It was Quentin, right? All right. All right. Um, so, yeah, we, we need to, as we study, we need to try to, um, we need to pray and ask God to give us more thoughts, give us more, more thoughts that is from his word and new thoughts so we can apply it. But, and, but every time this happens, the more, the more we teach these things, the harder it will be later on also because we have to sift through every single one Every single doctrine that someone puts up, because this, this is what Miller's dream shows. Many people came in. And Miller them all. A, a, amen. And Miller had to oppose every single one of them. Too much. Amen. And amen. And cleaned it up himself. So our work is to do do the same as Miller and do it as far as human effort, guided by divine aid, can do it. And then holy divine aid takes over and Christ does the work. Because Christ knows we can't do it. But go ahead. Amen. Amen, yes. Because you see that in, in Ezekiel. Ezekiel saw the wheels within the wheels, and it's the complicated play of human events. Human events is wars, famines, pestilence, all these things. But, the, but then he saw they were all guided by the hand of the Lord. So it was all God behind it. So, all right. How, how much time do I have? 13. 13? All right. Um, come on to a close soon. Oh, actually, yeah, I just want to gonna go down to the, the heading that says Samuel, and then we'll stop there. So go to PTUK again. Um, yeah, go to PTUK, July 2nd, 1891, page, uh, supposed to be 206, I guess it's paragraph 15. Some of it got cut off. It's the last, it's the last um, paragraph from E.J. Wagner. says, it is because of what? Despising prophecies and prophesying that so many have apostatized. So anyone that turns from the truth, they, they really just don't like what? Prophecy. It says, the word of prophecy is a light. Is a light. And when men turn away their eyes from it, they go into darkness and soon stumble and fall. Their minds become blinded to the simplest truths. And these things we, these things we, we have seen over and over again. And, and since the prophetic word is a light shining in a dark place until the day dawn, uh, excuse me, until the day shall dawn and the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more onto perfect day. Pause. What rule did he just use? Here Amen. Here a little, there a little. He took a part of one verse and connected with another part of a verse and made a whole sentence. Amen. Amen. He was looking at one subject and he brought these two scriptures together and put it into one. We need, we need to realize as, as we're reading and studying the rules that are being used so that when, when we do it, we know why we are doing it as well. Amen. All right. 
says, it is evident that as we approach the end, we shall have more and more of the gift of prophecy to keep us from the darkness that covers the earth and the gross darkness that covers the people. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. May God help us to believe. Okay. Jump now to LLM 33. This is Loma Linda messages. And it's the first things quoted in Second Chronicles 20.20 and Isaiah 8.20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to the word, is because there is no light in them. It says, two texts are here set before God's people. Two what? Conditions for what? Success. Two conditions to be established. It said, the law spoken by Jehovah himself and, and the spirit of prophecy are the two sources of wisdom to guide his people in how many experiences? Every, Every experience. Deuteronomy 4.6. This is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Who shall say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So when the spirit of prophecy comes back, say that again. Amen. It's a living people. It's a living testimony. So when the spirit of prophecy comes back, the nations shall know this. This, this, this is what happened with Samuel. Because Eli, um, Eli told everybody in the nation as well about what Samuel said. Says the law, the law of God and the spirit of prophecy go hand in hand to guide and counsel the church. And whenever the church has recognized this by obeying his law, the spirit of prophecy has been sent to guide her in the way of truth. Next paragraph. Um, the bold. This prophecy points out clearly that the remnant church will acknowledge God and his law and will have the what? Prophetic gift. Obedience to the law of God and the spirit of prophecy has always distinguished the true people of God. And the test is usually given on what? Present manifestations. It is for your time. The, the scriptures are applied for your time. It says, as the third angel's message arose in the world, which is to reveal the law of God to the church in its fullness and power, the prophetic gift was also immediately restored. So directly connected with the law is what? It's prophecy. Once the law comes up, prophecy is there. Because this is what happened on October 22nd. Amen to the law and to the testimony. They're, they're divinely connected. And way, the way we know this, what is the easiest way to know that these two are closely um, um, linked? Yeah, Nick, go ahead. What you said? Oh, yes, yeah, aligned, yes, as well. The ark. Within the ark was the law and what? The Amen, the testimony. The um, Aaron's rod that budded to show that the Lord chose Aaron as his mouthpiece. Amen? It's the easiest one, one of the easiest ones to show. Because many minds will find an easier one for them. It's a plainer one for them as well. All right. Can someone read next paragraph 34.1? Amen. So the scriptures is true. So that when you believe, believe, um, believe his prophets, you shall prosper and he shall be established. And the spirit of prophecy is there to, to, to fix the differences of opinion. And you have to believe in that which the Lord has sent. Um, we're going to skip CIS uh, 41.1. Lord willing, we're going to read, take up these points again. Um, the Lord wills it. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Going down. Amen. Of 1840. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's a faulty reasoning. All right, so coming down to close, we're going to look at Isaiah 7 and Daniel 11, 14, and we're going to summarize something from 1 Samuel 3. 
Isaiah 7, verse 10, it says, Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. What sign is this speaking of? Which sign is this? Yes, amen, the birth of Christ. What, uh, uh, another thought, because that is one. The sign of Jonah, that's another one. The Sabbath, that's another one. What, what's another sign? The cross is the sign of Jonah. What, what else? Hmm? The bow in the cloud. Yes, that's another sign. So all these things is 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 this sign that 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 shall be shown. They all shall be culminated into one and shown forth at one time. So, Amen. Yes, the 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 rainbow, marriage, the Sabbath, the cross, Christ's birth. His baptism, the fourth plague, all these things, all these signs are brought into one. Verse 11 again. Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. So he's rejecting the what? Spirit the spirit of prophecy. I will not Amen. I will not hearken. I will not let this man reign, reign over me. Mm. Says, And he's saying the same thing as, as the Jews. Um... Obey the voice of the Lord. Oh, yes. I'm speaking about Isaiah 7, 8. Yeah. Amen. The prophecy of the, the old men. Amen. It says... Um, and he, verse 13, and he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small, small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So we need to keep this. Every prophet, every prophet's first prophecy, or uh, actually, let me rephrase it. Every prophet speaks about the birth of Christ. Speaks about the cross and speaks about a coming destruction. Always. Amen. Always. If you just go back and look, that pattern is there. They always speak of Christ. They always speak of his birth or, or, or the cross and the destruction that's coming, coming upon a nation. But they also give a message to tell them how to um, flee from the wrath to come. That's always the case with every prophet in the Bible. It says, so... Um, all right, cool. Go down to Daniel 11, verse 14. It says, And in those times there, sh there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to what? Establish, Establish the vision. Who are the robbers? The huh? To Amen. To fulfill the prophecy. Amen. So who are the robbers of thy people? Rome. It's Rome. So, therefore, we can expect... These, these, the light in which the Lord will send, we can expect it upon Rome, amen, which is yeah, the false prophets, which is the Protestants, as I heard, and it would all and it and it would always lift up Christ, his birth, and the cross, amen. So, these, these, these two events will be shown forth at this point onward down on, on to the end. The birth and the cross, because Christ's birth and the cross is basically the same thing. They both went forth to kill Christ. Amen, yeah. Amen, yeah. Oh, yes, the Sabbath. Oh, yeah, that was, I forgot, yes. We, are, we just said it. It's the Sabbath. We can rest assured that the, the, the light that, that will come here will deal with these points. For a fact, it will deal with these points. Amen. All right. And we're not, we're not going to read 1 Samuel 3 because we know, um, I believe we all know the, the story of Samuel in the sense, um, yeah, in a sense that Samuel's message to Eli was, was that his house will fall. But that message in that message that the house will fall, 
There was, there was mercy in it because there was time for Eli to fix the wrongs. So, and it is not a, it's not a like a, maybe it's like th this area, this, the, this group. It's a pointed, it's a pointed message because it was directly against the house of Israel. And Samuel told Eli, I mean, not the house of Israel, excuse me, the house of Eli. And Samuel told Eli, it is against your house directly. So, um, it, we can rest assured as well that when that light comes, we know that it will be directly pointed to a certain to a certain groups, but it would make us fear and tremble first. Daniel feared and trembled when, when he heard it. Jeremiah, they all did. And we have to wrestle with, with Christ in prayer so that we might um, obey him and do right. And it says that Samuel, let not the words of, of the Lord fall. Meaning, he gave the message faithfully, even when he, had to, when he rustled and everything, but he still went forth and gave it. So we must not let the words of the Lord um, fall either. So, and it shall be proclaimed between Dan and Beersheba. The whole Adventist church will hear of this. And we've, we've read it before. Um, we will be, will be worthy of notice. And it has to deal with, with coronavirus because... That is that's one of one of the things that that um, quote that she states, not not so much coronavirus, the vaccine says that these false miracles will bring the test. So we have to keep these things in mind as well so we can rest assured that the spirit of prophecy is going to come here. It is. And the Lord has been prepping us with that from back here because he's been giving us the, these very things from from this point. And we have to realize that the Lord really is guiding us. It's a real nice thing to, to know that the Lord is guiding you. You have no doubts because Satan can come in any form, whatever form want to come, and say whatever he wants, and it won't move you because you know that you did it on the unction of the word of the Lord. So I pray that we may, we may um, study so that we might have our own testimony. My testimony cannot be yours. I, I cannot speak well. So... If God wills that this is gone from me, that is, that, is, that is only something that I can say. No one else can, can, can say that. So everybody, they have their own, own struggle and own issues and own struggles and things they have to fight with. But when, when Christ brings you out of that, that is something that only you can say, only you can bring forth. Because Peter, James, and John were the only ones that can speak of, man, I saw Christ, Moses, and, and um, um, Elijah. They were the only ones that can say it because they were witnesses of it. Um, Judas, Judas, Matthew, and Luke. I um, mean, yeah, Judas, Matthew, and Luke couldn't speak of it because they never saw it. So everybody's gonna have their own testimony, and and um, we must go forward with that if it's inspired by the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. So let us resolve to study His Word more and more. Shall we close with the word of prayer? Most so Father in heaven, O oh Lord, we thank you for for the light from your throne on high. We ask that you may forgive us for our sins, O oh Lord. Please help us overcome the evils in our hearts, our wrong thoughts and, 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 and ways, O oh Lord. Please help us to heed your, your word and to walk, walk in all that you, you have sent, O oh Father. For, for we see in a small light that which you um, long, long for us all here. So please help us to... to reach out for that and and work um work in those lines oh lord and we ask all these things in your son's name we pray amen